Hey guys, so I thought for um, fine arts for the second six weeks, instead of doing one video for each week, I would just go ahead and do um, just one video. I'm not going to walk through step by step what to do each week um, because it does vary pretty greatly depending on if you've got the four year olds or if you've got the nine and 10 year olds. So um, I'm just going to kind of go through the supplies that I've pulled together, um, maybe just some tips that I have found in years past, and then just point you back to the foundations guide where it does a really good job of walking you through each week how to um, cover basic music theory, which really is our goal. We are using the tin whistle um, to give the kids a really great introduction to music theory, um, different ideas uh, about music like consonants and dissonance and um, parts of an instrument and how an instrument works and that kind of thing. So um, I'm going to walk you through the things that I've pulled together and just, you know, like I said, just touch on each week and um, hopefully that will be a really good framework for you to then go and um, figure out a little more detail in detail how you'd like to um, structure that for each one of your classes. So the very first week, week seven, um, they recommend that we um, sing the song for the cycle. So the song for cycle two is actually on page 253 in your um, foundations guide. And it is, I believe, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Yes, it is Mary Had a Little Lamb. So you might, you know, just remind the kids what does Mary Had a Little Lamb sound like and sing it as a class. And that will give them a good, oh yeah, let me get this in my mind. And this is, you know, kind of at the end of the six weeks what our goal is. Um, a, that would be what our goal would be to work towards. I would say the younger kids, the four and five year olds, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to have very many of those kids at all that are able to actually play Mary Had a Little Lamb um, by the end of this six weeks. Um, if they have a mom that is really excited about helping them learn Tin Whistle, then um, they might be a lot further along than someone who um, doesn't particularly care to hear the tin whistle every day. Um, and there is zero judgment from me on that. Um, and I will just let you guess which one of those two camps you think I fall into. So, um, you know, just, just as a tutor, remember that you're there to model for the students how to learn. And so it is not your charge to teach them by the end of six weeks how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb or anything on the tin whistle. Um, hopefully what's going to happen is the kids are going to get excited about the opportunity to do something a little bit different and um, it will stir in those who already have a musical inclination the um, the desire to pursue that and also kind of the base um, the base message which is that it's going to take a lot of work to be proficient at it so um, that's kind of where we're going so when I say the goal is to move towards Mary had a little lamb it's not that the goal should be for your children for the children in your class to be able to master that it is just hey this is the you know this is kind of the end goal that we're putting in front of you that we are going to work towards a little bit more every week so don't get hung up on thinking, I have to make sure all my kids know how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb because that is not the case. Um, so the, um, the foundations guide says, you know, to lead them in with a steady beat. Um, I already know some of you that have told me I can't keep a beat to save my life. That is totally fine. And what you should be able to do is tell them how slowly or how quickly you want them to sing. Because if you just say, okay, let's sing Mary Had a Little Lamb, um, you're probably going to get all kinds of crazy chaos. But what you might want to do is say, okay, um, I'm going to sing the first line and then you guys join me. If you feel really uncomfortable counting out that lead beat, then sing the first line of Mary Had a Little Lamb, which will not only establish how quickly you're going, but it also will establish the key that you're singing in so they can join in with you and, and sing along. Um, at, one of the things that it talks about in the first week is to practice hand position. So they're going to show you how to hold your um, how to hold your tin whistle with the left hand 
um, down at the bottom and the right hand on top. And, you know, some people, especially for the younger kids, get stickers so that the kids know which, which hand goes on top and bottom. Um, it also kind of gives you recommendations, and I, I strongly recommend that you remind the kids not to blow on the tin whistle until you give them instructions to do so. This is going to be the hardest fight that you have with your kids um, unless you establish from the very, very beginning that blowing the tin whistle when they are have not been given permission is not okay. Um, many a student in my, in my foundation's classes in past years have lost their tin whistle for a few minutes or maybe for the whole time, just depending on how generous I'm feeling for that particular day. Um, but if you can help your children understand from the very beginning that you're going to be learning lots of things besides just how to blow and play the tin whistle, and some of those are even going to be really important to help them be able to play the tin whistle, hopefully they will um, be respectful enough to listen to you as you walk them through everything they need to know how to play and not just how to blow on it. Um, so anyway, week seven is pretty basic. They want you to name the parts of the tin whistle. Um, for each one of you guys, I'm going to have a set of three um, page protectors for each one of your students, and all of them are in different colors. So like you can, you can see I have this big stack here, and they're all different colors. What is in the red is the same as what's in the green. It's just I've got three different three different copies of it. So you can decide if you want to assign colors to people or if you just want to hand out, you know, hey, here's your set for the day. It really, really, really doesn't matter. But I have in the first one a copy of the tin whistle. Um, and so you can, you know, walk them through what all the pieces of the tin whistle are. Um, behind this... Behind this sheet that is labeled, um, I have a sheet that is not labeled. That's actually not true. There are parts of the tin whistle. I thought I had one in here that wasn't labeled. <laughs> Sorry. I do. It's just on the back. Okay, so this might come in a later week, but what you have in this first one would be an example of... Here's a labeled tin whistle. This is from page 88 in your foundation's guide. Here's a simpler one, um, parts of the tin whistle. This might be a better option if you, um, you know, have the younger kids. It still has the mouthpiece and the fipple, um, but it just has the finger holes labeled all together instead of individually. And then I have the unlabeled one. I knew I had one in here that was not labeled. Um, this would be great to keep in the, you know, page protector, and then you can use them week to week, even, you know, without having to make new copies or whatever, but, um, the kids can just use their dry erase markers on the, on the page protectors. So there's a labeled and unlabeled tin whistle diagram. Um, the foundation's guide says to encourage students to trace and label the diagram, and then, um, Maybe even while the students are tracing or drawing, you can do um, a review of some of the things that you talked about. So that's kind of week seven, really, really basic introduction. Um, I recommend that you give the kids an opportunity to just blow their hearts out on the tin whistle. Um, otherwise, they'll end up being pretty frustrated that they were so excited and looking forward to week seven tin whistle and they didn't even get to play. Um, I would say limit it to like, 10 seconds, 10 second free for all or three seconds or whatever your, your threshold for tolerance is for that one. Week two uh, or week eight is the focus is going to be on dynamics. So we're going to talk about loud and soft and the notations for that in music. Um, we're also going to sing the song. You can, you know, sing the song and use the different dynamics to illustrate. We're going to go back and review the proper position, the way to hold your hand on your tin whistle. Um, and then we're going to play different finger positions. Um, you know, again, depending on how old and young your kids are, you may start with um, the D scale and you may only get to one note. We're going to play D and that's it. And we're going to try to get it together all as a class. You may take turns going around the room, um, whatever. But the D scale ascending is on one side and descending is on the other side. So, um, again, it's in these nice 
sturdy page protectors so they can, um, you know, set them on the floor. What I had my kids do was turn their chairs around and sit on the floor in front of their chairs. And then I would stand up so they could kind of use the seat of their chair as a place to rest their tin whistle when they weren't playing, a place to hold these sheets if you would like in a, um, maybe a dry erase marker, but then they could still see me over the backs of their chairs because I was standing. So um, that might be an option if you have enough space in your classroom um, to do that. Week nine is note values and the staff. So we're going to be talking about the staff, which is the lines on our paper. And we're going to talk about the different types of notes. So um, quarter note, eighth note, half note, and how many beats each one of those gets. Um, and then they'll be able to use the staff paper to practice like drawing a treble clef, also to practice drawing the different kinds of notes for the rhythm that, that you know, either you would like them to write or just practicing the different types of notes. <clears throat> On page 95, it gives you, you know, a really good walkthrough of how to go through that with the kids. Week 10 is rhythm. Um, so this is going to be very simple rhythms. This isn't like, you know, percussion, crazy rhythms. This is just one, two, three, four. Um, if you just feel like you're totally lousy at this, that's actually really fantastic because that will be such an encouragement to your parents and grandparents in class that feel that same way. Um, <clears throat> but um, it also is a great opportunity for you to model, hey, is there somebody that would like to do this for us? Bringing the kids up especially is such a great idea, If you, especially if you have seen that they can you know, keep that beat. But it doesn't go any faster than an eighth note. So quarter note is just your typical one beat. One, two, three, four. And then the eighth note is double that. One and two and three and four and. So if you can cover that with your class and help them begin to clap or tap with their foot um, or pat the back of their hand like I did, you know, pat their legs. Those are different ways that you can practice different rhythms um, without the tin whistle, but then you can also translate that to the tin whistle, especially as they begin reading um, the song for the cycle, which is Mary Had a Little Lamb. The song for the cycle, you'll see these little dots up at the top. These are the finger positioning. So if all the dots are white or they're not filled in, then that means you don't cover up the holes. If the dots are black, that means you cover up the holes that correspond to the tin whistle. Um, and then it has for you the notes. So we have quarter note, quarter note, half note. So the beat, you can have the kids practice this clap. One, two, three, four, one, two. And then on three, they're going to clap once, but they're going to hold it for two beats. Three, four. Um, this won't be super foreign to them because they should be really familiar with Mary Had a Little Lamb. So as you are singing it each week and as you are helping them practice, that rhythm isn't going to be quite such a big deal. It's just it's just putting the, the term rhythm to what they're doing. Um, and then last is week 12. And week 12 is, um, oh, I forgot to mention on week 11, they're also um, introducing the note names. So the names of the different notes on the lines and the spaces of the staff, they're going to help, you know, help the kids learn how to identify what those different notes are. And then on week 12, this is a review and celebration. Um, you can, you know, review the things that we've learned as far as parts of a tin whistle, the staff, the treble clef, the, um, the notes on the lines and the spaces, rhythms. You can have them practice for a couple, couple of minutes and then, you know, give a little performance if they have learned how to do something. Um, learn how to play a song or something. Um, <clears throat> you can also just have the class all together practice Mary Had a Little Lamb. And maybe even if you can't get all the way through the whole thing, maybe just one line or one measure. Anything that you can do to help them begin to feel confident that they can pick up a, a musical instrument and begin to learn it the way that we did, learning the the parts of their instrument, how they work, how they correlate to the music that's on the paper, and how to interpret the writing on the paper as far as notes, names of notes, and rhythms, then, you know, that will go a really, really long way to giving them the encouragement that they need to be, um, 
you know, to begin to pursue proficiency in a musical instrument. So that's kind of the focus for week 12 um, is the, you know, the review and the celebration. And like I said, I will have copies of staff paper and the, um, the song that we're doing for this cycle, scales and fingerings and tin whistle diagrams, and those will be in page protectors. And then we can talk at tutor meeting if there are any other, you know, things that would be helpful to you to have or if you have any questions. So that is second semester weeks 7 through 12, cycle 2, fine arts. <laughs>